this is uh, InterSystems kickoff webinar for the AI programming contest. And today we want to describe you the templates we prepared for you, which you, which you will use uh, next uh, two weeks to deliver the best AI solutions with InterSystem Iris. Exciting, yes? So I'm, I'm thrilled. And, uh, but actually, first, before we start everything, uh, yeah, today we will introduce you to templates, uh, but we do not insist on it. So, I mean, you, uh, you, of course, you can use integrated ML, Python gateway, but if you, if you have a better idea how you can uh, build an AI solution using the system series, please go ahead. But we will be very excited and you will get some bonuses uh, if you use uh, uh, Python Gateway and integrated ML. And uh, first I want to uh, uh, introduce you Tom uh, DR, uh, our product manager of uh, uh, data science and uh, AI tools, uh, AI and ML tools. Uh, uh, Thomas, Tom, uh, correct me <laughs> with your title, please. If you, uh, yes, and Tom will uh, introduce us uh, a new, uh, very hot, hot new feature of InterSystems Iris. We just baked the new release months ago. Uh, InterSystems Iris Advanced Analytics, uh, in Advanced Analytics, Analytics, which you can collect from uh, Docker Hub. And uh, so Tom will introduce you integrated ML uh, template, which you can use to um, to build AI solutions with InterSystems Iris, and you can present it during this contest. Please, Tom. Hi. Yeah. Thanks so much, Evgeny. Yes, my name is uh, Thomas Dyer, and uh, I'm a product specialist uh, for machine learning and AI at uh, InterSystems. Uh, acting as the pro, uh, the uh, product manager for for this feature, integrated ML, um, and so I'm just going to show uh, my screen and show a couple slides. Hold on one second, and we'll talk about what is integrated ML, and uh, then we'll get into the template that we have uh, to um, to to hopefully help you use it. So um, just. You know, roughly, if you're not like kind of familiar with what auto ML is, but uh, really integrated ML is how we are kind of packaging and providing access to uh, auto ML engines uh, that are outside of of uh, Iris or they're not developed by kind of inner systems um, necessarily, uh, but we want to provide a very easy way to develop your your solutions that integrate machine learning on the iris data platform uh, but leveraging the best of breed so we'll talk a little bit about this uh, first off just you know of course the machine learning process is uh, many steps and it's iterative and you typically have to install something like scikit-learn or tensorflow um, all types of things uh, learn how they work, uh, program them in some different language. Um, but uh, if you don't necessarily want to do all that, it can be kind of difficult to get started. Some people are just very comfortable with SQL, and that's where we're kind of starting uh, with uh, integrated ML. And really, so the um, what you want to do from all those steps, you know, starting from getting your data into uh, getting, you know, acquiring your data on the left here, preparing it, doing feature engineering, selecting which model you want to train, then actually training the model, then tuning that model, uh, and eventually deploying it. Uh, you may iterate over those processes a lot. And it can be, as I mentioned, you know, installing different packages, using them, use a lot of compute resources. Uh, so automating this, though, there's a lot of parts that can be automated, and that's typically like what's what's termed like auto ML. Of course, I'm leaving out uh, some things on the end here. Typically, auto ML doesn't really help you so much uh, operationalizing, like taking that model that you then de develop and, and using it uh, back in um, within the environment where the data is coming in, and that 
that environment where the data is coming in and being live, that transactional data, that's where IRS is, uh, has a particular um, kind of strong role to play. And so we really want to uh, make this whole process work. Oops. So, you know, as I say, like you want to kind of automate the parts that can be automated and make it easy to do the things that you can't necessarily automate entirely. Um, so what is uh, integrated ML? So I'll just talk about three main points. Okay, so it's all SQL. Everything that you need to do in integrated ML is done with SQL commands that we've added to our SQL engine in Iris. So when you install a version of Iris that's with the advanced analytics package, which is basically a you know kind of an add-on to Iris, but we're we're delivering it as kind of a, a version of Iris now. Um, it has all of these packages installed when you install Iris. So there's no need to go out and get different ones. Um, and it's all within the SQL engine, so it's just some simple DDL and query functions. It's turnkey, so you just have one interface to get to multiple types of AutoML frameworks. As you can see, on the right hand side, we have three engines that are delivered uh, that are that are uh, currently packaged with Iris. We have our own default AutoML uh, that builds on Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, and XGBoost, and uh, develops a model based on those uh, packages. Or you can also use H2O AutoML. It's the open source H2O-3 AutoML package that we've we've provided access to. And then we also have a, um, an engine that, uh, that uses DataRobot. DataRobot is a company that has their own um, platform and that's a paid relationship. Now they are going to soon <laughs> have kind of a, a free tier that they're going to, to release, uh, but they don't have that quite yet. I was, I was hoping that would be announced by now. Um, for this contest would be quite interesting for people to be able to uh, use DataRobot. DataRobot is a, a very full featured platform. Okay, so then once, once you train your models and using either one of these engines, um, then you're, you're, you're automatically able to deploy it within an application because then you can use the predict function, SQL function, anywhere that you're using SQL um, and want to mix it in with, um, with what your application is doing. So that's all handled kind of seamlessly. And so that's, that's the real value uh, with the way that this has been built. So you not only get kind of best of breed machine learning, simple syntax with SQL, but you get um, just kind of automated operationalization, all easy to do. Okay, and, and overall, this is not meant to replace data scientists, but more like complement them and make them, you know, more productive and to make the process more intuitive um, and easier to get through. And especially in a tight time situation like a programming contest, that might be uh, very useful. Um, so I'll go into a little bit of the kind of the concepts of, of how you actually uh, use and think about integrated ML. Um, and so first off, there's kind of a model. Uh, when you have a statement that's create model, it's really just defining the problem. It's defining the machine learning problem as um, a particular table or a view that you have. You start with, it has many columns that are used as the inputs, and then you're going to decide, you're going to tell it, tell integrated ML which of those columns you want to use as the target for the machine learning model. Um, that doesn't really, you know, just making a model is really kind of like a model definition. But uh, then when you actually train the model, um, integrated ML is using a process that it's, you know, tracking a training run. Uh, you've decided on which of those engines you're using. Um, you tell it specifically which data you're training on, and it's going to track the training uh, process and a training run. The output of a training run is a trained model. Um, and that, of course, tracks, uh, keeps track of the provider, you know, which particular engine you're using, 
and some information about the machine learning model that the provider uh, gave as an output of the process. So then additional, so then that's the tra that trained model is what's actually called uh, from the predict statement when you're running predictions. We also have the ability to uh, run a validation run. So you may want to keep some data back separately to test your model. And you can then use the validation um, to uh, like it's it's really it's a validate model statement um, that will calculate metrics how well that model performs on that data that you want to test it on and provide some metrics. So those are all of the um, all of the kind of elements that are kind of underneath integrated ML. And really, this is uh, defined in a, in a schema and stored within kind of the internals as many uh, one to many relationships. So you can have one model definition. You can have multiple training runs as you get new data or as you want to experiment with different data. So you'll have different training runs. And training runs, well, currently, one training one run produces one trained model. Uh, but there are cases, and it may be possible in the future, that you would have multiple trained models that are produced. Uh, in fact, like H203 and Data Robot produce like a, a leaderboard, and you might want to choose some model that may be lower on the performance in some capacity as far as accuracy, but it might be a very fast performing model, very like quick and dirty. That might be easier if you have an application that needs, needs uh, to run a very quick model. Um, and so those are all kind of tracked together and you can, you can switch between them with different syntax in the SQL. And then of course, for one trained model, you can do multiple validation runs and get multiple metrics for each validation run. So uh, there's uh, links in the uh, paper. I'm gonna uh, also share any of these uh, links that are not there or links at the, the repo that I'm gonna go show. Uh, to these things, but we have a lot at the Learning Services uh, uh, website uh, at InterSystems. They've produced some videos and and uh, there's the documentation that's available there. And also when you install Iris, um, you get the, uh, the, the documentation of integrated ML in the form of a user guide that's right integrated within it nicely. Um, and so you'll get much more information on all these things I talked about. All right, so I just wanted to then go to, um, when you go to the template, um, you'll actually just show kind of what's in here. This is uh, on Open Exchange, and you can find the template there. Um, and I have links to uh, the Learning Services site here and a little bit of that information about what is integrated ML. Um, and here's that link to the Learning Services site. So once you once you download this um, and get clone it, um, you'll be able to use Docker Compose to set up a full environment um, that has an Iris server and a Jupyter Notebook server. And you have this nice diagram that shows what ports are doing what um, and uh, where things are connected. And of course, there's a couple of Python notebooks that show two different ways. Like one of the issues with like using some of these technologies, of course, is like just connecting to them uh, using JDBC or ODBC uh, from Python uh, within the notebook environment. We have an example of how to do that, uh, what commands you would use, and then you can use those either in a notebook or, or some, other, some other way. There's also um, a, a way to, of course, access from the SQL uh, the, the web terminal within IRIS uh, that's available at the, the command line. Uh, provides a nice way to kind of browse data. And then we show you also how you kind of can take your own data and import it um, into IRIS uh, using a very simple uh, CSV gen is a, is a package for IRIS that, that uh, loads up a CSV file. So all you have to do is kind of put your CSV file in a in a directory and then rebuild the Docker environment with a Docker Compose build and and then it'll be available in SQL. So I'll just show you quickly like uh, the command prompt um, how to do that. I've I've already downloaded oops I got it running. I shouldn't do that. Wah wah. I close this all down. 
Let's show how easy it is to go up and down with Docker Compose. So it's pretty nice. Okay, so I've done that. Um, okay, so if you, this is where I've, I've downloaded the, um, I've get cloned the repo. Okay, and uh, there's just a few, uh, direct, a couple directories and files here. Of course, uh, you, it's not all that much uh, stuff that's in here. Uh, but we do have things um, uh, isolated for between an Iris AA server. That's where Iris is running. That's where the data is. And that's where you would um, change the script to load different data and put, put different data in these so CSV files live in this data folder. Uh, and then we have, of course, the Jupyter Notebook running. And that's where the, the Jupyter uh, Notebook uh, files are. Um, so after you get that downloaded, you do a Docker Compose build. And I believe there, it runs very quickly on my machine. In fact, there's just more that happens uh, on the first run because you first have to acquire the actual Iris community edition. But then we, we data the local container and then we run a script that database and be to run and to your suit you okay so once you then you can simply do Docker Compose up. That gets everything ready. Now, apology goes in that diagram. Start both servers, and you can see in the box the first some activity happening. So only a little bit that happens from the server, but it does show that. I'll show you the connection. Excuse me? Yeah. No problem. So, yeah. Okay. All right. No worries. All right. Um, oh, yeah. So, started. Let's see. Um, it's, it's starting up. So, uh, so that you can actually go to the, the notebook because it's running. And it will be running on your local host if you. Ninety-six. Okay, so link directly to it, so you can see it right there. A notebook server running, and we'll look at this campaign. Little Jupyter notebook things running. Just uh, set it up so the notebook takes up the whole. We're actually using integrated ML using JDBC. Um, so then, then you can just see all the, the things that the kind of connection to the JDBC. Uh, people that are familiar with using like JDBC. All that uh, that defines what table we're going to look at. Items in, in this, uh, this data frame that we're looking at. The 
poems, you ideas, and the the purpose. Buddies, uh, whether they clicked on a uh, marketing. Or something about the demographics that you're collecting. Uh, just use all this SQL uh, to. Defined yet because I didn't take this all the way. Yeah, table or view name not you. And so this should get an error as well because. To a, or analogous to a SQL table. Okay. Statement is to train it, and you can train a model as many times. Data is being um, actually pulled from the data. Auto ML engine that we have uh, set up. You as the data source for this model. That long to run. This is on my Mac laptop, and it's already finished training. So simply now you have a, tra a model trained and you can actually see it. Now, this, since this is the second time I ran it, as I mentioned, we're keeping track of the, mo the trained models. Every time you run that train statement, you'll get a new trained model and it gets a system defined trained model name that you can override and it will tell you a little bit of information. So this is all stored in an information schema uh, table and we have others that, that look at the validation run. And so then you can look through this, um, go through a couple more steps in, in getting a model trained and being able to use a model, um, but, the, but should give you an idea of how, how straightforward it is to, to start using it. All this is SQL, we're calling it from Python, but of course you can call it from any other language that you can use with the Iris database. Okay, so I'll, I'll pause there, um, kind of, see where we are with time, and maybe uh, go on to the next one or see what FDN wants to do. Maybe some questions. Sure. Uh, thank you, Tom. Yes, we have questions here. Uh, okay. so let me go uh, for them. Uh, Yuri asks, uh, uh, what is the better strategy to acquire data? Uh, is it with uh, business uh, uh, with DPL or with adapters? Uh, so it's, it was answered, but you actually uh, maybe we are interested in your opinion too. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, it all depends on, uh, you know, the context. You know, I think that we have a lot of, you know, especially in these, uh, in, in just, it just depends, right? If you're already collecting data from like a business process, I mean, that's one of the strengths of our database and our platform is that we're persisting all of these messages so you could actually use not only the data that's coming into those messages, but there might be some information that, that gets stored as part of the, just as part of the process of, of storage, of, you know, and, and just having all of that data collected, you might be able to put it together in interesting ways. So I'm not sure. Um, I think that probably Edward has a lot more information about, you know, the kind of the different ways of using our interoperability um, with that. But you, it's it's totally uh, it's all integrated in the sense that um, all the the interoperability components seamlessly interact with SQL. So all of that data that you're storing from from the messages um, is is in SQL. 
uh, so it can be used by integrated ml so it's it's really up to you mm -hmm. uh yeah yes thanks tom uh, edward may, maybe you want to uh, comment on this loudly uh sure so if you have a more online system where you get the data periodically um, you would be very interested in uh, using interoperability adapters, uh, well, business services mainly, I think, to, to load the data and maybe business operations if you are pulling the data from external systems. But if you uh, just want to load one batch once, uh, you can use CSV again to download the data from file or from URL and just be done with it. Yep. Yeah, that goes. That's very good, thank you. Yes, thanks, Ed. Uh, and another question, uh, which Edward uh, partly asked, answered. Um, the question is, when integrated ML will be released as a part of a product? Yeah, so uh, we are in, you know, public, we're in public beta now. Um, so not only can our customers get um, builds, uh, builds of Iris uh, in any different, platform uh, with integrated ML uh, included uh, if they would like uh, to be part of kind of our beta program and, and work with us on that. But we also have it in the community edition, not only Iris, but Iris for Health in this beta. But we are going to have it in general availability um, probably in about a month. Great news, thank you. Uh, I just want to add that uh, if you clone this uh, repository uh, and check the Docker file, you, you can see what image uh, is used to uh, to have integrated ML feature. Uh, so you can use it. So as Tom said, it's public, publicly available as a beta. Mm -hmm. and, uh, another question is, uh, Yuri asks, uh, if we have interoperability uh, model inside, of this uh, by, uh, inside of an in, uh, image we supply with, with integrated ML. Yes, yes, I believe that's all, all there. Uh, yes, and uh, thanks, to, thank you, Tom. And I uh, just want to add that uh, the answer yes is obvious because um, in any release of Iris, we, we have inter interoperability feature enabled and uh, deployed. So. Yep. So it's part of the product. It's part of Iris. Yep. Okay. So do we have any more questions, any more questions for integrated ML? Uh, guys, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, say it loudly or just uh, drop it into the chat. Uh, I, uh, but, uh, by the way, I have a question while people uh, um, type in it. So, uh, Tom, um, how can I understand uh, what ML engine is being used uh, with my model? So, um, so you can see that you get a little bit of information right there uh, by querying the information schema um, table. So, in this case, uh, I've just, if by default, uh, with these images, the, the, the ML engine is set to our auto ML provider, which is based on scikit-learn, TensorFlow, XGBoost. Um, and so it's going to choose a model from those packages based on the type of uh, target column that you're trying to pick, what kind of model it makes. And so in this case, for this campaign, when you, when you, uh, when you look at all the... Uh, the rows in this information schema.ml trained models um, table, you can see some information about it. So here's the provider, that's which engine of the three that we that we ship with the product that was used. And then also the model type, it's either classification or regression, are the types of uh, broad machine learning problems that we're addressing currently. And then you get some information in this model info field um, that it was a logistic regression um, model <clears throat> and it was used the uh, scikit-learn package, <clears throat> the scikit-learn uh, implementation of logistic regression. 
um, that could also potentially in this package field could could be TensorFlow if it made a neural network or XGBoost if it used a, a boosted uh, tree model. Does uh -huh. that answer your question? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, I have uh, second questions he here. So you say that integrated ML um, considers what um, what model type to use in every uh, in every particular uh, situation. So how does it happen? So um, so first off, we use like the the the, the target column type. Um, and to determine whether it's classification or regression, if it's a number, uh, it's going to pick uh, it's going to pick regression unless it only finds a couple of values, um, in which case it will consider it a classification. Alternatively, you can cast a column as a certain type. So even if it is like a number and you have a few values in that column, you can cast it as a string, in which case you can force the, the force the engine to to treat it as a classification problem. That's okay. the first thing. And then uh, after it's decided that, then it looks it subsamples the data, and tries different um, appropriate models on that subset of data, and sees which one of those model types does the best. And based on that, it then does a full training with that type of model to arrive at the final model. So that's how our engine works. It's really pretty straightforward. It's not doing a very sophisticated search, but it's meant to uh, try a, a few good options uh, on a small amount of data so that it ends quickly and provide you with a pretty good answer uh, with a limited amount of time and resources. Okay, thank you. Um, and we have questions. Uh, so, uh, when running into Windows host, uh, uh, the Docker instance will, will, will run out auto ML or H2O? Yes, or yes exactly. It, right. So, so we do have a limitation in this, this beta release, which I, I hope by general availability will, will not be the case, is that our auto ML engine is not. Uh, set it, it does not, it's not operable, it doesn't work on Windows. Uh, but if you're running the Docker container on Windows, it's going to, it's basically, it's running Linux in the container environment, and then our AutoML, default AutoML engine works there. So it will use that, yes. Mm -hmm. But on Windows, if you just have the Windows build um, uh, and you're running it uh, on a, 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 an actual Windows installation of InterSystems Iris on your machine, it's going to set the, the default is going to be the H2O engine. Okay. So we will, uh, for H2O, we wait for official release. I understand. Uh, and uh, another question uh, Can uh, NLP uh, be used uh, via AutoML? Um, yes, if you do the feature engineering yourself. So the AutoML, our, our built-in AutoML engine does a very kind of rudimentary um, text processing on, on text columns. So it will do what's called term frequency, inverse document frequency encoding of those columns. It essentially finds the most informative words and makes columns um, features, uh, additional columns internally to capture that data. And then we'll, we'll send that to the, uh, into the learning process. Uh, can do a really good job, um, actually. So it's, I say it's rudimentary because it's not particularly groundbreaking or, or, or sophisticated, but it can work in a lot of cases. Now for H2O, if you're using the H2O, provider that or engine it ignores text columns um, and that's just a limitation of the way that that's set up but you could you can create those text columns with your own processing in SQL or do whatever pre-processing you want to do before you start the auto ml and and get the and get that information into it and use that if you if you want uh, but those are some of the kinds of in and outs of doing text processing and we're, we're adding you know kind of ability 
to uh, use the, the uh, INO engine. Uh, since that's open source now and available in Python, you should be able to mix and match those, uh, make your columns from your data using that engine, and then feed it into integrated ML if you'd like to. I wanted to touch on this uh, other question about the type of the model type that it uses. So for the, um, so the question was, can you choose what type of model type it will work on or is it completely automatic? So for the integrated, for the auto ML, the default engine that we provide, that InterSystems wrote, it has no like tuning available really. Uh, there's, there's, there's just, it, it will automatically choose. And of course, like I said, you can cast a column uh, to kind of tilt it one way or another for different types of models, but it's 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 doing you know relatively small selection of models anyways. Um, it's not really much value to be added there. For the H two O provider, that's one where if you really want to change which models are 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 selected or or considered, and how they're um, how they're scored, uh, you can get in and use those uh, use some um, options that h2o provides for that you can you can actually provide a list of model types to consider uh, that overrides what they've chosen so that's a provider that when you really want to do more customization um, and and get down and dirty with uh, the machine learning part that might be more your speed Another question, uh, if integrated ML supports unsupervised uh, algorithm tool? No, it's, it's, it's really in this uh, very kind of constrained auto ML framework of having a supervised learning on a, on a table of data. Uh, so we're, we're not really doing that, um, doing unsupervised learning. This is, this is um, supervised only. Uh, okay, fine. I think, uh, guys, we will have like a tons of questions <laughs> on this, and we can follow on these questions in uh, our Discord channel. We have AI channel there. Please yes. uh, raise your questions there and continue discussion. And thanks so yes, much. We, we, I'll we, be we, on there. I'll try to be on the Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. So, uh, and uh, the second part of the show, it's Python Gateway now, and Edward Libiduk, uh, sales engineer from Moscow office, will uh, do the show. Please, Edward. Uh, hi, everyone. Do you hear me? Do you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So, I want to talk, I, th I think I'll talk about three things. First of all, we have two slides with explanation of what Python Gateway even is. Uh, second part, we will talk about uh, templates and how you can easily get it running yourself and modify and add your model and your code. And third, we we'll talk about some suggestions for the contest if you are still uh, thinking about what are you going to do what application are you planning to submit for a contest so uh python uh we uh, we have three community gateways they are about interchange very interchangeable i would show python gateway but if you want to you can do the same in r or you can do the same in julia if you're familiar with that languages and prefer them on the lowest level, we are interfacing with a C API and providing an object script API. So you can work with Python as you work uh, with object script. And on a higher level, we are providing interoperability adapters. So you can, uh, you have a business operation and you call it from your business process. I'll, I'll demonstrate it. What uh, Python Gateway allows you to do? Turns out it's not that much uh, functions which we need to implement. Well, you can execute arbitrary code. Whatever code you have in Python, you can execute in InterSystem Cyrus. You can uh, load the data from InterSystem Cyrus into the Python environment and get the data back serialized into a string or into a JSON 
uh, object or array, no, well, depending on your values. Uh, you can save and load Python context, and, and you have complete error management. That's that's about it, and that's enough. So with that said, let's move to the more exciting part, to the demo. And here is the template, uh, which uh, which I published. And um, so first of all, it's available in Open Exchange, but let's see it on GitHub where you'd probably be using it. And you need to press this button, use this template, and you would have it cloned into your um, account. So you can actually commit to it. I won't do that, but you use this template. And after that, you need to git clone and you replace the Intersystems community with um, your own account name. So you clone your own template, right? After that, we are doing Docker Compose build. Uh, it should take a few seconds, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's very fast. Uh, the what uh, Thomas said about loading the data and uh, Docker also applies here. We uh, built images based on a fairly on, a, on actually we built the same uh, built on the same image uh, advanced analytic image. Uh, there are some divergence, but uh, they share a common ancestor. And uh, so after you built it, you your compose up in a detached way, so you're not uh, binding it to a current uh, current terminal. Let's see the Docker compose. Docker Compose is very simple. We are running one image and we are uh, offering two ports, one for web service, uh, for web stuff and one for studio. Uh, and the Docker file is, uh, we are essentially loading the code and compiling it, the installer. And, and that's about it. So our Iris is running. Let's see what you have inside. So you can start from a multiple kit exercises, which are available inside the container. It's it is a complete um, um, exercises from the beginning to finish, which explain how uh, interoperability production, intelligent interoperability production can function. We get the data from external system. Well, we simulate it actually, and uh, we have a predict process. We have a train process which trains our model. Uh, we check that the model works, and we retrain it all automatically as needed. And let's see our intelligent process. We can log in into a management portal, and in interoperability. Here is our production, and here is our training process, which is actually more more interesting to see because predict process is very simple. And uh, for example, first uh, first uh, step, first activity is we're loading our models, and uh, next we are loading the data. Uh, you see, you don't need the advantage here is that you don't need to connect to use ODBC or JDBC. You just write your SQL query. It can be parameterized this way, or you can just write select asterisk from sample person, and it would also work. Here we can work. Uh, here we can load from arbitrary table. It's parameterized on a process level, so we have an SML. I just specify which table I want to load the data from, and it's um, loaded and available as a data frame on the Python side. So we do some feature extraction, PCA, and uh, actually build the model. I'm not going to, to talk about it. I have like 10 minutes left, and it's really a uh, way, way, way bigger topic. So with a template, you have a Visual Studio code environment, you open the folder of a 
of a template where you clone the template and you have Visual Studio connection automatically. So you have some package sample and uh, all the examples which are available beforehand are, are also available. So here is our train process in a less, uh, less maybe intuitive way <laughs> for some, but uh, if you're familiar with uh, BPLs, you might prefer this interface. Uh, next, uh, let's get inside our container. Exact Iris, Iris session, Iris, yes. And we are inside our intersystem Iris environment. So we can like set X equals three, four, five. And we also have a Python shell here. If you want to check something, uh, you can type ZPy and uh, it's just execute uh, Python code or random. You get a different result every time. And uh, so everything works. Uh, every arbitrary Python model or Python code whatever it doesn't really matter you have a complete python environment and you just use it you can either use it from object script or you can use it from uh from business process so let's move to resources at the end of this tutorial which i really encourage you to try especially if you're not very familiar with uh uh, machine learning or uh, intersystems interoperability productions, you have some resources. So you have convergent analytics. Here is a list of webinars, articles, user guides, demo cases for Python Gateway in English, in German, and in Russian. Uh, some, some more links, some more samples. This template actually samples. There is uh, interesting data duplication example and in con oh yeah very important in convergent analytics there is this ml toolkit fundamentals pdf which is a illustrated guide on working with uh, ml toolkit um, it's uh, like 100 pages long and very very filled with information so you can find everything here from installation to, to the use cases and if you want more use cases you can write to us to ml toolkit at intersystems.com uh, and we can add you to a private github repository where there is even more content and there is discussion with industry professionals so that's some resources which you have to build your solution. Of course, you can also ask questions on developers community and on uh, Discord. So to a third part, uh, ideas for, for contestants. Yeah. So I wrote some and I'd like to elaborate a bit on that. ML operation. So uh, yeah, Python Gateway is a very low level. So you, you need to write your Python code yourself which is a buffer for someone, surely. Uh, ML, uh, integrated ML, which is also available in the same image with Python Gateway template, provides, on the other hand, a very high level. You don't really need to think about AI ML at all. You just need to write SQL, which is great. But we don't have a middle ground of sorts with a code law approach, but with control over Created models uh, and the idea is writing an ML operation. As you know, most models are essentially implementing the interface of fit and predict. And uh, on, on the side, we have uh, parameters, hyper tuners, which do optimize. And most models and pipelines actually fit into this interface. And the idea is to write an ML operation into which you send uh, into which you send uh, the the data well the name of parameter of the data values for hyperparameters and model type and you get a train model back so it's kind of a automation 
uh, on, so users can uh, build model on a higher level and not write Python code, but leverage our uh, ML operation. That's, that's one idea. Second idea is add new language. It may, might sound uh, hard, but it's really not. There are free open source examples, Python Gateway, R Gateway, and Julia Gateway, uh, because InterSystem Cyrus is very easy to interface with uh, C libraries, and um, uh, most languages do have C libraries. Uh, you can add another one. For example, I, I've checked beforehand before writing this. It's not random, and Octave and Skylab do have C APIs which can be used to integrate with them with InterSystem Cyrus. So if you're familiar with writing C code, uh, you can follow these examples like, oh, the whole Python gateway is, I don't know, it's like 200 lines probably of C code. And frankly, it's more, most of it is comments, how, how five, like, all right, 500 lines, but still it's, it's, it's really not that challenging. It, it's very interesting, uh, I think, to, to try because, uh, well, I added new, new language. That's, that's, that's something interesting. It's, I think it's, uh, it can be a challenging, but interesting project. Uh, so a new, new showcases, of course, we are very interested in that. If you have some real data or some idea how to use uh, InterSystem Cyrus in real time in enterprise, uh, well, please do. Please uh, show us an example. Convergence Analytics provides several starting use cases. Uh, which you can build up on. So data deduplication, I'm just very interested in data deduplication. So if you have a data set and you know how to deduplicate it with Python or R or Julia, please do that. And reinforcement learning, yeah. So reinforcement learning is in a rise and it's definitely something interesting with agents and environments and all of this uh, interaction between them. Uh, and uh, well, I I propose Markov decisions par partially observed Markov decision process, but other reinforcement learning techniques are very welcome if you have the data and uh, want to go this way. It's definitely something more interesting than uh, linear regression number nine thousand one. Well, that's some ideas from me. Uh, and if we have any questions. Let's ask them. Uh, thanks, Ed. We have one. Um, okay. uh, Renata Banzai asks, uh, this looks like uh, Airflow DAX. Is it comparable to? It is fairly similar to various AI email workflow platforms. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, essentially, you can connect Jupyter and develop uh, this business process from Jupyter for a more familiar interface. And InterSystem Cyrus provides greater resiliency and uh, control over what's, uh, what happens. Uh, let me show you an example. So we have our, sorry, just a second. Uh, the, yeah. So we have our reduction. Let's try another one. There are several examples here. It's just the most interesting one. And uh, we are running this process. Just a second. We have a complete visual trace over what's sent inside for execution. Uh, here's the line. What we want back, we want correlate core variable back and we want it as a JSON and we get it back and it's all uh, traced. We see how much time is spent on each step. So if you have some issues, uh, you can immediately see where they happen. If you have errors, they're also low. And it helps you to productize uh, your AI ML workloads. That's, that's our goal with adding this community gateways to InterSystem Cyrus.
I hope I answered the, the question. Any other questions? Uh, the question was, uh, if uh, what is the limit of uh, database for, for for the templates for AI contest? And I answered it is 10 gig, but so guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 10 gigabytes, but uh, if you're hitting the limits and if you have issues where you have a data set larger than 10 gigabytes, I'm, uh, write to us and I'm sure something can be can be arranged. I'm not sure, but but probably. Yeah, community edition has a limitation of 10, 10 gigabytes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Th th thank you very much. So don't make uh, uh, this this uh, be a limit for you. So if you really think you need more, connect us. And, uh, connect to us, we, 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 can, we can manage this. We, we don't want to see any limits with uh, Intel Systems AI contest. So any more questions? And I, I'd like to clarify for, for Yuri that uh, the size of a Docker image itself does not affect the size of the data you have. So you have 10 gigabytes for your data and uh, regardless of the image, you still have 10 gigabytes because it's uh, 10 gigabytes is a limit of database sizes, not on the container sizes themselves. Yeah, the image is quite sad, but it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, the last question in the door. Uh, so is there any feature engineering functions inside Iris? Well, a mal operation, which I propose to for, for contestants, is exactly uh, aimed to solve this issue. Uh, uh, Python Gateway doesn't provide uh, high-level functions like feature engineering. It provides fast data load, fast code execution and fast get my data back uh, but this more high level uh, features functions are definitely something which would be great to add mm -hmm. thank you edward uh, thank you tom i think this uh, kickoff was exciting and we even cannot stop it but we should so and um, i hope to see your solutions soon on uh, uh, open exchange and actually yeah, if you really need another meet, uh, meeting to chat about it, to discuss, please raise it in in Discord and uh, on developer community. And actually, have a great week. Uh, be, uh, deliver AI solutions with Intel Systems, Iris, uh, Integrated ML, and Python Gateway. And good luck in, in the contest. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks, luck everyone. to everyone. Good luck. Bye-bye.